we and my friend Rachel are going to the cat shelter. Yes. I don't know if today will be the day that I, I meet my future furry friends. Um, I feel like I'm more ready now. <laughs> I'm just going to have a look. I'm just going to have a look. One of the main reasons why I didn't uh, adopt any cats so soon after Blondie was, well, first of all, I was heartbroken and uh, I don't just jump into things, you know? <laughs> And also I had a lot of travel during the summer where I was away and away, um, I was back and then away. So like uh, the month of July, I was only in Ireland actually for a week. So I was away in France and then I was on holidays. So I now have a block of time where if I am away, it's only for like two days at a time. Um, I don't have any big trips forecasted. <laughs> so what I would ideally like is two kittens. I never got to experience kittens because both Blondie and Pepsi, well Pepsi just moved in and made friends with her, she moved in and Blondie was a rescue and I didn't really know her age, um, the vets speculate she could be one and a half to two, she was like a bit bigger than a kitten, she was starting to be a mature cat, so yeah, kittens! I could go to the shelter and I could see an adult cat and fall in love. I'm very open. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have a look as they say and I'll show you what other kitties are there. I'm going to fly out to the DSPCA. I've been out in their shelter before a couple of years ago, a good couple of years ago. Um, I had Blondie and Pepsi at the time. I just went out to kind of have a look and just showcase, not showcase, that's not the word, but I'm just show some of the animals that were there that needed homes. Um, so I'm gonna go just to have a look. They did have on their Instagram last night, there was a picture of two kittens that had come out from their foster home and it was a black and a white kitten. Like in mini Blondie and Pepsi. Another thing I need to stop trying to do is Blondie, animals are their own personalities. But one thing I will say is and if you are a dog person, and I find you'll have a breed of dog that you really like, when it comes to cats, there is a similar-ish. <laughs> They're all very unique in their personalities, but I do find white cats have lovely, calm personalities. They, they are spicy sometimes, but Blondie was an angel. There was a white cat up on my man's that lives behind her. It's same temperament. Black cats love black cats they get a bad rap people think they're bad luck no they're amazing uh pepsi was a law unto herself she was spicy but i loved her spiciness so black cats have quirky personalities too ginger cats wild toffee next door i'm gonna probably stay away from the ginger cats no shade to them just because there's loads of ginger cats on this road <laughs> but if i meet one and i fall in love I, i'm open to offers um, one of my friends, actually a girl I know who has two tabby cats, she has finished fostering them and they're now up for adoption. They look like Mr. Carrington's tabbies but they have white chins. Um, but again, I have to not be like going after their looks, you know what I mean? It's not like, it's like looking for a boyfriend. You know, the personality has to match, we have to be the right connection, although finding a cat that I have a connection with, it's gonna be way easier than finding a man. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to go get my friend Rachel. And we're gonna head out, it's only about 20 minutes away. And let's see what cats there is. I'll probably just vlog on my phone because I don't have a big camera annoying the cats. Um, so yeah, let's go have a look. So the DSPCA is about, it's about like 25 minutes from me. It's up near the Hellfire Club. It's actually in a beautiful location. And there's a little walk around it as well and a coffee shop. There was loads of kittens, but what I loved was there was loads of kittens in pairs because that's what I wanted. I wanted to get two that would grow up together, keep each other company because one kitten? No, we need two. I also realized that I didn't get enough footage of the older cats, but there was about five or six older cats, bigger ones. There was a lovely ginger cat and he had like a wobble, um, but he was like perfectly fine and I should have got footage of him, but I, I think I just got too excited when I was in the cat shelter. 
and this is the moment I got to cuddle my new babies. So yes, I decided on, I saw them straight away when I walked in. So the black and white kittens, um, there are a brother and a sister nice and playful they just seem so well bonded together as well and um, they were playing with each other they were sleeping and cuddling with each other so they were just absolutely adorable so also when you go to the cat shelter i don't know why i just assumed i could cuddle and pet every kitten there um but you do have to take uh precautions like wearing gloves and an apron um so it's like you don't make them sick there was this beautiful kitten that he had surgery he only has one eye and he keeps putting his paws out and there was a sign to be like don't pet my paws which i was like oh but actually it was to stop him getting sick so yes you can't cuddle them all but i had decided on this pair i am taking them the sticker is going on their little thingy to say they have a home and they are coming home with me also i just got some footage of the new pet memorial garden there's a rainbow bridge yes i'm not crying <laughs> you are it is adorable I'm just back from the shelter. I'm a mom again. <laughs> I'm a cat mom again. Oh, I'm so excited. I can smell them off me. Um, so the black and white kittens that they're a brother and a sister. Um, I seen them on the DSPCA's Instagram last night. They had just come out of their foster home. And I did ask like what happened to them, but they the girl said she thinks she can find out for me, but she thinks they were just a, a cat was rescued who was pregnant and she she thinks that they were part of her litter. Um so I don't think they're three months old. So either they were found with the mother or um, the mother was pregnant and they were her kittens, I'm not sure. So um, there was loads of kittens and it's late in the season. I was chatting to the lads. I don't know why I'm crouching down. I just need to adjust my tripod, but I'll crouch. <laughs> the, there was loads of kittens and the girl was saying, you know, uh, cats can go on having kittens up until kind of like October, November season, but that normally for this time of year, there wouldn't be as many kittens. Um, but there was, there, do you know what? There was five white cats. And white cats will be rare. Um, well, they would hear rare enough. Like, I remember when I got Blondie, like, what, well, 11 years ago? Um, I remember bringing her to the vet, and the vet was like, oh, God, a white cat, a pure white cat. This, we don't normally see them. There was five of them. So there was these four white ones from the same litter, and they were pure white with little black pepper marks on the top, like, like you sprinkled pepper on them. So when I was there, uh, there was a lady who came in and she was like, I want two cats. And I was like, me too. Um, so I had picked mine already. And I was like to the girl, cause I knew, I knew anytime I've inquired about a cat in the past couple of weeks, as soon as I inquire, a thing will go up and the cat will be like, oh, home needed or whatever. Gone, gone, can't get them. So you have to be quick <laughs> if you see one you want. So when I walked in, my friend Rachel was like, oh my God, pal. I was like, yeah. So um, I had a walk around looking at them. A lot of the, thankfully, a lot of the black cats that were there had stickers on them saying they had a home. Um, because I feel like black cats, I don't know why people don't adopt them as much because they're beautiful. They're mysterious. They're just, lovely so when um, I was delighted when that pair were together and the white cat is a girl no the white cat is a boy and the black cat is a girl and the black cat is going to be fluffy so I could see from the fur that she has um she's going to be fluffy so I had two tangle teasers belonging to Blondie that I obviously didn't throw out. So um, once I give them a clean, they can be used for the new generation. Um, I, ha <coughs> Ugh, I can't talk. I have got names picked 
but I'm not going to tell you just yet. We we'll wait until I get them home. So I can't collect them until Sunday. So there's two days. So you put your name down and you like you fill in the form. You show pictures of your house and stuff. I think for dogs it's more stricter. Someone someone will physically come to your house. Um, but I said to the girls, uh, I said to the girl, I know one of the girls who work there, um, because I did a visit to the shelter before, so I was like. Just ask Suzanne, she'll vouch for me <laughs> that I have enough space for them. Sundays and Tuesdays you can go out and collect them and then they do like an adoption thing. So I think there's like a talk and then you'll like chat one on one, pay your donation. Um, but what I was really impressed with was the donation covers the cost of spaying. So I think it's 99 euro. Like I remember paying 100 and 50 just to get blondie neutered years ago and that didn't include vaccines or nothing so um the adoption fee and donation covers the two vaccines the microchipping and the neutering so i think the two lads will have to go off and be neutered in about three weeks or something i'll know more on sunday <laughs> so now i'm like too excited to do anything <laughs> so i'm just like Whoop. i have to get the house ready now the house ready. I really, I need to clean up. I mean, it's not bad, but I need to have a perfect for when the kittens come. So I need to, I kept some of Blondie's and Pepsi's stuff, like their water fountain um, and things like that, but I'm gonna get new, like litter trays and toys and stuff because yeah, I, I kept one or two of Blondie's toys. Um, just because I couldn't part with them. But I think these lads, nice new toys, new bits and bobs for them. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. The first thing I needed to tackle was under the bed, but I also needed to pull out some of my autumn clothes and do that kind of autumn summer switch over. But I actually made up one bag um, of old clothes for donation. So for anybody who's new, I used to work for a fast fashion big retail chain before I was made redundant during the pandemic and one of the one of the downsides to that was I had a lot of clothes which I'm not proud of because when you work for a fast fashion chain there was that pressure to always have you know be wearing what was new and also we had discount really good discount which ended up in me having a lot of dresses which I held on to um, after like I was made redundant because I was like oh well I might need these again but slowly the past kind of couple of years since then since the pandemic I've just been thinning out and anything that I haven't worn in the past in the past like year I just give it and um, pass it on and give it to donation and maybe it's just a sign of maturing and getting older but I now favor buying things that are better quality and just having one or two of them, instead of having an overwhelming wardrobe full of dresses, I think if you buy things that suit your shape, first of all, and that you're comfortable in, and that has some pockets, <laughs> but basically, yeah, what you're comfortable in, and there's no shame in your style changing. Still absolutely love a dress. I feel most myself when I'm in one, but they just, don't have to be every day and they don't have to be you know what's on trend so I'm like what I'm comfortable in and what suits my shape more than what's trending so I also needed to clear up the under bed situation so I was just looking around the house for if I was a kitten where would I hide and play <laughs> so under the bed and if you are new to my channel, I did used to have a lot of my teacups kind of out on display and trinkets and things that I collected. But over the past couple of years, I have them in cabinets now. Much easier to stop any breakage, much easier to protect them from dust as well. And they're kitten proof, which is great.
Also, this is a bit random, but I'm on week 12 of The Artist's Way to finish it. Someone in the comments was saying there's like a follow-on book. So, uh, The Artist's Way by Julia, Julia Cameron. This one is called The Practical... Is my camera gonna zoom? The Practical Art of Creativity. So it's like a follow-on book. And I'm not sure if it's... I haven't had a chance to read it. So I don't know, I think you continue doing your morning pages. There is some tasks in it, but I'm not sure. Is it a weekly thing? The way, the artist's way is like week one to 12. It actually like popped up in my like Amazon recommendations. Oh, there is, look, week one, week two, week three, week four, week 12. Okay, so we have another 12 weeks, but um, yeah. A sense, of discovering a sense of boundaries a sense of resiliency, camaraderie, whereas like, the artist's way is more kind of about recovery and recovering your artist self. So um, it's, I'd say it's a bit more deeper. I'm kind of hoping this is a bit more lighthearted. <laughs> but yeah, continue doing the morning pages and yeah. I'll let you know if this one is any good. But thank you to whoever it was who recommended it in the comment section because when I seen it on my thing, my Amazon, recommends I just bought it straight away because I was like oh that's the book that that person was talking about so thanks for that I do need to do way more cleaning, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, I'm gonna fly over to the shops because I realized that it's late night shopping. The shops are open later on a Friday. So I'm gonna go over to the pet shop. It's open till eight um, because I don't, I have art class tomorrow. So I don't wanna be rushing around trying to get stuff. So sometimes it'll just be quiet in the evening. So I think I might go to the TK Maxx because they do have really cute pet stuff. Or I could go to Home Sense. Oh, TK Maxx or Home Sense. TK Maxx or Home Sense. Home Sense. And there is a pet shop next to Home Sense. I just need to get cat litter and litter trays, toys and cute stuff. I'm not gonna go overboard with their food because anyone who has a cat knows that. They sometimes don't like the food you give them so it can be a bit of trial and error um, i know what blondie it was and then once she got her she literally had her dry food and then chicken or fish shiba that's all she had. um so i'm going to i'll just get like one or two things of kitten food and then the guys at the shelter will probably tell me what they've been eating so i'll get some dry kitten nuts and i'll get some wet kitten food but I won't buy the huge bag because I've learned from history that sometimes cat food gets given to the birds <laughs> but anyway let's go shopping let's have a ramble around my local home sense now they had lots of Halloween decor but maybe I'm just a bit late because it's you know first of October but there wasn't as much autumn decor, loads and loads of Halloween stuff and kind of decorative stuff. But when it came to like autumn decor, like autumn wreaths, autumn garlands and stuff, there wasn't as much. But again, I could just be late because I know a lot of people will buy that kind of stuff around about September time. But one thing that they did have was loads of Halloween pet toys. So there was loads for dogs as well. 
I had to pick up some of the cute kitten stuff, the Halloween stuff, because it just looked so adorable. They also had themed pet beds. There was Halloween pet beds and pet blankets. So there was like a whole aisle just for uh, Halloween pet stuff, which I was not expecting, but it was a pleasant surprise. I headed upstairs because I know they have more pet stuff up there. So the stuff that's there all year round. And I wanted to get some new pet bowls and dishes and things like that. They had a huge, there was so many pet beds. <laughs> I don't know if it was just the time of year um, or if they were just filling the shelves with them or if an order of that kind of stuff had just come in. Loads of options of pet beds, reasonably priced as well and lots of dishes as well. And sometimes when you go, um, there can be more dog stuff, I find. Um, I don't know if it's just because dogs as pets is more popular in Ireland, I don't know. But I find that there's be loads for dogs and not as much for cats. But actually, there was a nice equal divide, so there was plenty of stuff here for cats. And something that I learned from Blondie and Pepsi was, cats love a shallow dish. So if you ever wonder why a cat's dish is shallow compared to a dog's one, I think it's something to do with a cat's whiskers. So they don't like eating out of something that's too deep. Um, so they like a shallow bowl. So yeah, there's a random fact for you. Oh, today is today. I was up cleaning last night. Do you know what it is? I just wanted to make sure sometimes when my niece and nephew come, they have really tiny little toys, especially my niece because she has Polly Pockets. So I just wanted to hoover underneath everything just to make sure that there was no like tiny tiny things and um, that they could possibly pick up and chew. I have stocked up <laughs> on the logs because I think today will be the day once I bring the babies home that I light the fire. I have my fire guard in the shed actually because I was like if I light the fire I'm just thinking of hazards <laughs> or potential hazards. So we're gonna light the fire, bring the babies home, then over here, I just have, so this is, or was, Blondie's carrier. I did ask the girls the other day, was this okay to bring the two kittens home in? Obviously the kittens are small and the journey is only 20 minutes in the car. So she said, this will be fine. Um, like it is ideally just for one cat, but there's enough space there for the two of them. And actually if I put it into the car on its side, it seems to have like a bit more space. So have that ready, just put a few little toys in it. So I got in HomeSense the other day, I picked up just one pet bed because I have a feeling they're gonna like sleep with each other because um, that's just how they've, they're grown up together. Um, but I do also wanna sew and make other little little beds because I think that'd be a nice DIY. So I just have a little basket of toys. So these are just some of the bits that I got in home since the other day. So I have the ones that are on a stick, the ones that sound, make that lovely noise. And then there's loads of these tiny, tiny little 
catnip toys. Although I don't, how cute is that? Pumpkin spice. I don't think kittens get the same effect off catnip than adult cats do. I think it's something to do with um, until they reach kind of like, I don't know, puberty or something. Um, I think, I don't know how it arouses the cat. I'm not sure what the catnip does, but I know Blondie loved the catnip. Pepsi actually was mad for a bit of catnip. So yeah, I have some Halloween themed toys. So I have that ready and I have a little bed. I also have cat litter everywhere. So I just have a box set up over here. I need to just get a mat for it. That's probably not going to be its permanent um, residence. I have another litter box in the kitchen, but I was thinking, obviously I'm gonna bring them home today. They're gonna to be in the living room. Um, I do have some scratching posts left from Blondie as well. So then, yeah, this room, there's nothing underneath the bed. Obviously there's stuff, I suppose, for them to kind of climb up on, but I'll see what the kittens are like, um, how adventurous they are. But I may need to just take down some of the stuff on top. But again, I'll have to just wait and see. And the only thing that's kind of out of limits is I'll have to close my office door because my office is a bit of a mess at the moment and kittens will definitely cause a ruckus in there. I have the two little balls set up. I got these in HomeSense the other day, so I got a pink and a blue one. And I like how they have a bit of an angle to them when they're not too deep. Then I just have kitten food in here, as well as my porridge. <laughs> I have some food, cat litter, and then I have another cat litter box. Also, if you can get your hands, because cats love to flick cat litter out, if you can get your hands on one of these mats, they're great. Um, it's like there's little holes in them and it traps the cat litter from getting flung everywhere. Um, yeah, you can get them in like most pet shops, but I'm sure you can get them on like Amazon or something. So I have two litter boxes ready to go um, just in different locations because yeah. And then the water fountain is over here. I gave it a good clean. I had to like use, like descale it with vinegar to get the lime scale off it. So it's nice and clean, ready to go. I just have to put water in it and stick it on. So they have lots of floor space. And obviously that's just my bag of um, clothes that I need to bring. Um, to the trite shop, but they're not open today. So they've lots of floor space to kind of run around. Obviously we have upstairs as well, but I need to be careful because I don't know how, I don't even know if they can use stairs. <laughs> My friend has a puppy at the moment and I don't think the, the puppy's so small that it hasn't gone up the stairs yet. Cats are totally different and they're quite, you know, they're quite adventurous, so, I'll know more in a few hours if the lads are any good at going up the stairs, but I imagine it's going to take them a little while to just settle in and to actually start wandering around the house. It might even take a couple of days, I'm not sure, but at least I'm all clean, I'm ready for them and nothing's too valuable. <laughs> any of the valuable stuff is in the cabinets, so if they do decide to jump up, which I don't think they're big enough yet. Yeah, nothing is too, too valuable or too precious. I also just wanted to say for anybody who has lost a pet and maybe people start asking the question of, oh, when are you getting another one? Or maybe they're sending you pictures of cats that need adoption and you haven't even collected your own cat's ashes. Yes, that happened to me. <laughs> Um, you will know when it is and don't ever, I think, don't ever feel pressured to get a pet just because people are putting pressure on or they're asking you things or whatever. And I know people who have lost cats, dogs, and it's been years because they're like, no, nope, can't do it. Um, you will know when the time is right for you, but do do it for you. Never feel pressured into doing it. I definitely, at the start of the year, I was getting an awful lot of messages from people. Um, first of all, sending me cats, 
pictures of cats that needed to be adopted that weren't even in my country of residence and I was like that's a lovely cat in Scotland <laughs> um, and also yeah I had kind of messages from people like oh just get over it and get more cats there there's so many cats that need a home and everything and I'm sure I'll even get people being like oh why did you adopt kittens and not half dead adult grown cats that need homes but I think yeah, there's always, that's the internet, everybody. That's the internet. But yeah, never, never get a pet just because you feel pressured into doing it. Um, pets are a big, how to say, they are like kids, because you, I could have these guys for 20 years, I could have them for five years, I do not know. Um, obviously there's a financial cost in them, even when you adopt, yes, there is a donation fee, um, but you do have to factor in, if they get sick, can I afford it? Can I afford um, their yearly checkups? Um, can I like afford, obviously with the price of everything going up, can I afford to house and heat them? I can barely afford to house and heat myself, but you know what I mean? There's lots of things to consider when thinking of going for adoption. Um, or if you get a pet from somewhere else, whatever, you know, yeah, they are not just for a season, they are for, if you're lucky, an entire lifetime. And not to sound kind of too preachy, but there is things to weigh up and consider. And yeah, how often you're going to be home, if you travel a lot and things like that. And obviously getting them minded when you are away. So there is that additional, you know, financial cost with getting a pet. And it's really sad to hear there's a lot of, especially dogs have had to be surrendered because obviously in Ireland at the moment, we have a housing, a really, really bad housing crisis and rental system where people are paying more than the average monthly wage just for a place. Even to rent a room is ridiculous, the prices. And a lot of landlo landlords are selling their houses as well. So that's putting people basically into more expensive places, having to move. And a lot of places are not pet friendly. So yeah, there has been, which is, it's sad. So yeah, lots to consider when you're adopting a pet and never, ever, ever feel pressured, never. There's other ways you can kind of get your pet fix. You know, I've often thought about like, I could just walk people's dogs for them if I wanted a doggy to go to the park. Um, or, you know, you can also foster if you want to do short term things. I had considered fostering, but I not if I was fostering that black and white cat, do you think I'd have given them back? No. So I would have been a uh, foster mother fail and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's other ways you can kind of engage with animals. And also you can volunteer in the shelters as well. If you want to do one, day a week or a few hours a week, you can always volunteer in the shelters. So there's other ways you can get your pet fix as well when not having to be the full-time kind of owner. So on that note, let's go. This was the moment that they came home and as I'm doing this voiceover, if you hear pitter patters in the background, yes, they're running around as I record this. And it is time for me to reveal their names. Now I did share their names over on Instagram on Sunday and obviously I gave them Irish names and I know a lot of people um, watch from like outside of Ireland. So the names, um, I had a lot of people asking to explain the names. So the white cat is called Bon and that just simply means white in Irish. And then the black cat, which is a girl. So Bon is a boy and Bjog is a girl. And Bjog in Irish means small or little. And the reason why I called her Bjog, and ironically she's probably gonna grow up to be really big, um, was because she looks like a Pepsi Bjog. So she looks like a little Pepsi. So Pepsi Bjog, so we just leave it at Bjog. And I think it sounds nice with Bon as well. And um, so Bon is the white one, which is a boy, and Bjog is the black one, which is a girl. When they first arrived, they were, I, I wouldn't say nervous, but they were just apprehensive. When I was in the cat shelter, anyone who was adopting on that day 
we were all brought into a room and we were given like a 20 minute chat of like you know what to expect when you bring them home which was really really helpful um because I've never brought kittens home so they were saying like not to worry if they you know stay in the carrier for a little bit not to put any pressure on them if they hide behind a telly let them they will come out on their own time so I think of the two of them Bjorg was more timid and Bon was straight out investigating um but then after an hour they had the zoomies and they were running around all of downstairs and they were just having yeah they were hyper and I just let them blow off their steam and then I gave them their dinner in the evening I was about to say <laughs> that they were going to have a nap and be all peaceful. Bon has found a lovely hiding spot over here and Bon really wants to have a nap but his sister <laughs> is insisting otherwise. I just wanted to give a quick night one update. It wasn't actually too bad. Um, I, I suppose that was burn each burn themselves out. I I didn't know what the sleeping arrangement was going to be last night. I closed off the other rooms and I left them with the living room, the kitchen, the hall and then the options come up here if they got lonely. I don't know because they have each other as well but they are still looking for me and um, so that's nice because I feel I feel needed. And um, so last night I was actually so exhausted um, and I'm used to the noise of cats that if I'm asleep and I hear the dum 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 dum, I can kind of most of the time sleep through it. I could with Blondie. So I came to bed, heard them playing up with me, and then I woke up, I don't know what time, and the two of them were asleep in the bed by my feet. And I was worried I would squash them, but actually they're more resilient than I thought. And I didn't even think they'd be able to jump up on the bed. I don't know why I thought that. I thought they would be too small, but as you can see, they can jump up on the bed, they can jump up on the windowsills, they can jump up on almost everything in the house. Now they were settled there and they were, I'd say, had I not have disturbed them, because they're killing each other now. Had I not have disturbed them, I'd say they would have had a nap. Would you? <sighs> I actually have to go outside and do um, a fair bit outside in the garden for Sunday's video. So I'm going to see how they are. Like a couple of times, like I, yesterday I left to put rubbish in the bin. And then as soon as I walk back into the kitchen, the two of them were looking at me as if to be like, where did she go? <laughs> Hey, go easy with your sibling. Go outside and maybe just for half an hour at a time, just check in on them and then lengthen it um, and see how they're getting on. So I, yeah, they're obviously still really young and I don't want to just leave them, but I do think they'll have a proper nap if I'm not here kind of annoying them. They, especially Björg, the black one, she seems to kind of be like watching me to see what I'm doing, where am I going? So um, yeah, I'm going to go outside, get some stuff done, and then hopefully they settle a bit more and they get more confident with just walking around the house and pottering and stuff. But um, I'm so, 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 so glad I got two um, because just they're playing with each other, they're grooming each other. Yeah, so, so happy I got two of them. 100%. Even though it's twice the noise, twice the food, twice everything. It's twice the fun and they have each other as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to sign off, but you're here. For Would you like to say goodbye to everybody? <laughs> Would you like to say goodbye? Bon? Would you like to say goodbye? Pyok? No. They're too busy having a little wrestle match. <laughs> we'll see you in Sunday's video.